There are other approaches. A new type of skincare test which evaluates something called my skin microbiome. I hope it's quite self-explanatory because I've never done anything like this before. Apparently, this little swab will gather a sample of the different types of bacteria on my skin. This is quite weird. <laughs> Depending on the results, I'll be recommended a new skincare regime to fix whatever problem it finds. I've always been the one to say the first goodbye. A few days later, I'm off to get my results. The lab I'm visiting also does what's known in the industry as claims substantiation for skincare brands. Basically, they run tests to prove products do all the amazing things they claim. The realm of product testing is something that is so new to me, so I think this will be really interesting. David Caballero Lima runs the lab and has been tasked with teaching me the ABCs of my microbiome. Good luck. I feel like my IQ has doubled since I put this lab coat on and walked in here. <laughs> He's even got samples of the four bacteria most prevalent on my skin. The most common one is something called Cutibacterium, and you have loads of this. <laughs> that and sounds this, bad. It is it's not that good because it's basically the bacteria that clog your pores and uh, make the pimples. So this bacteria is why you have the acne you have. This nasty microbe made up 89% of the bacteria on my skin. And you have other things like Staphylococcus, which is considered a good one. So you can rebalance your microbiome by making this grow a little and this decrease a little. You can use that to help the symptoms of, of, of your acne. David recommends skincare products with specific ingredients that should help me. I'm going to use them for the next month and then take another microbiome test to see if they've improved my skin. I am a slightly cynical. How do you know that these ingredients actually do work? Because we actually test them. We make human skin in the lab, and then we test the product's efficacy. Yes, you heard that right. These pink pots of goo are actually synthetic human skin they've grown in the lab for their claim substantiation tests. A product is applied, and by monitoring the skin, they can see if it actually works. Here we have the pimples that we might can make on our lab skin model. What do you mean? So you can make a spot? Yes. These little white dots there, each of them is a pimple. Wow. I've never, ever seen or heard of anything like it. And then after you have that, you can test products. This method is unique in the claims substantiation world. Is this way of testing a lot more quantifiable than perhaps how it's been done traditionally in the skincare industry? Yeah, it is. Here we have scientific backing of the claims because most of the claims on the cosmetic industry are based on the uh, uh, opinion of the user. So they ask you how do you feel after using certain products. It's a very subjective way to uh, uh, back a claim. If it's not scientifically proven. It seems to me like a bit of a farce. Why don't all cosmetic companies use quite rigorous testing like you do to substantiate their claims. You don't need to do that because no one is asking you to substantiate your claim scientifically. This is a bit of uh, the wild west. You've really opened a can of worms in my head now. He literally said it's like the wild west out there. I think we should be exploring this line a lot more. People like me, consumers, place so much emphasis on what these things might be able to do for us. And if a lot of it is a load of rubbish, I want to be the one that actually proves that.